Um, this session is open for questions. We have another seven minutes for um, this, the speakers for questions, burning questions. Please come to the microphone. Identify yourself. Yes, microphone six. Yeah, yeah, please. Microphone. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. My name is Cornelia Anastasaku. I'm a breast surgeon from Athens, Greek, uh, Greece, Athens Medical Center. So I think women, um, uh, all, w w which desire a, um, a mastectomy, need to understand that um, uh, a beautiful breast, a very beautiful breast, is not a functioning breast, and it, it's not their breast, and the sensibility of the nipple will not be the same. But I, I have a, a question to Dr. Rutgers. I wanted to ask you, what if Marlene was a 53-year-old woman without a mutation, uh, coming with a multicentric, very, very low-risk luminal A breast cancer, let's say three lesions, very small, um, every lesion smaller than seven millimeters or eight millimeters? clinically and ultrasound uh, uh, negative axilla. Would you then recommend, and an LCIS, would you then recommend a prophylactic mastectomy? Um, on the other side, and a mastectomy on the uh, breast cancer side? I, I, I understand where you're heading for. And in general, the better the prognosis of the initial primary, the longer life expectancy. That's why. Second, the younger the patient who developed breast cancer, we know that in itself, the higher the risk is of a second new primary. So these, these two general factors should be factored in the discussion with the lady. And there's two different option, uh, situations. It's the situation where the lady comes in and really wants, for instance, breast conservation and what is the right of you to tell her, no, you should have a bilateral mastectomy? Then you need to have really strong arguments. The other way around is that patients can be treated very easily with breast conservation, but demands for a bilateral a prophylactic mastectomy. And yes, you have to sit down. You have to understand. And there is no, in the situation you described, a definite uh, no, you should never do it. It's, it's a crime to do a bilateral. Neither, I am very uh, willing to a woman who is asking for breast conservation in her 35 years, um, and she's 35 years, then to say, no, 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 you should have a bilateral, a PC, a bilateral mastectomy because the arguments are very limited. So it's not a yes, no answer. Thank you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Microphone number one, my job. Morning. My name is Maria João Cardoso. I'm a breast surgeon from Lisbon, and it's specific for Paolo. You mentioned it's, it's about lobular cancer, because although lobular cancer was represented on Z11, also we always have a minor number of cases. So uh, when we look at the criteria of inclusion in the sound trial, as it is written, it is not divided. So. Do you have lobular cancer included in the sound trial? Because obviously they behave differently. Yes, uh, yes we have uh, about 9% uh, of lobular cancer in both arms of uh, the trial. And uh, till now we didn't observe any difference in uh, behavior between the two kind of uh, cancer. So we enrolled uh, exactly the same uh, as other cancers. Thank okay. you. Please, if you give short time, so short question, and we try to answer shortly. Microphone six, then two, then five, then stop. Pimenta Koppert, breast surgeon from the Netherlands. Uh, my question is for Professor Fitzal. Um, I have the impression that when there are microcalcifications showing DCIS around a HER2 positive tumor, that after neotrophant chemotherapy, sometimes this DCIS response has a response. Can you comment on this? Do you also have the experience that this HER2 positive DCIS maybe can show a response and therefore maybe this area could be 
um, left. By a case by case, maybe it is, it is possible, but you know, we have no data on that. Uh, and the problem is that we do not have the tools to be able to see the response before surgery. So it is really like tossing a coin. If the MR shows no residual disease and we still see microcalcification about 40 or 50 percent, you still have cancer cells in there. And those can be also at the edge of the microcalcification. So unfortunately, when you have microcalcification so far, it doesn't matter of the biology so far. We have no data for that uh, published. I would always resect the microcalcification in, in total. Yes, I would too also. But maybe when we together share our experiences, maybe this is a subtype we can uh, leave. Thank you, Vienter. Well, sometimes, indeed, in case by case, we do a re-biopsy of the calcifications after the chemo if the MRI shows a complete remission. And in some patients, you see only uh, limited, n nothing in, in the ducts, only uh, calcifications without any DCIS. In this situation, we embark on breast conservation if patient desires with all the caveats. Yes, there. but how do you measure with the follow-up? Because uh, when you do yeah. the next mammography, you will find again microclassifications. And so what, what are you doing? Paolo, of course, as always, you're completely right, and that's the problem of the radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, I, I promise, Niels. Uh, thank you, Niels Kruppmann, breast search from Denmark. Uh, I have a problem with the uh, three positive sentinel nodes. On average, you remove uh, 1.5 sentinel node. It is either blue, hot, or it is clinical suspicious. So what do you do in daily clinical practice? I, I, I basically do not understand this, and I've asked it several times before, and I never got a good answer. <laughs> but in clinical practice, of course, uh, uh, you feel with your hands uh, the axilla, so uh, usually we remove all uh, the uh, hot uh, nodes. Uh, we use only one tracer lympho uh, scintigraphic uh, method, a radioactive tracer. Also without any blue, and but uh, if uh, we feel some hard or suspicious no node, uh, we remove. Usually, I remove uh, all of them and send all together to uh, examination, to final examination. Yes. Or sometimes, uh, if uh, there is high suspicion, to frozen section, and sometimes I, I do axillary dissection uh, if I found uh, macro macroscopic involvement of the axilla. But how often do you have three nodes to examine? One question. <laughs> okay, final, final one is uh, another pimpose. Uh, I'm uh, Anand Kopika from India. My question to Professor Rutgers is, uh, uh, you talked about check two. Uh, uh, how about PALB2 or suppose a Lynch syndrome with a lot of family history of breast cancer? Would you advocate CPM in such patients? Because we have encountered these patients. Sometimes a Lynch syndrome in the family and three sisters having breast cancer. Yeah. Well, this is a very high-risk situation, particularly with PALB2. And there we, we discussed the option of uh, bilateral mastectomies, also in, in healthy women, yes. These are very rare families. Maybe not, not aware in India, but in, in my environment, it's rare. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so all right, so we probably finish here. Is, uh, thank you for all the speakers and thank you for all that. Thank you very much.